I'm Chase and this is All Things Random. Today we're looking at my cheap Chinese go-kart, the Dongfeng 200 GKA. Why am I doing a review on this cheap Chinese off-road go-kart? Well, because just like a lot of people in the off-road world, there are some real people that are Yamaha enthusiasts that will spend $20,000 on a side-by-side, -side. people who are Honda enthusiasts who will spend $19,000 on a side-by-side, -side. and people that just, I don't know, have way more money than me, but I refuse to spend that type of cash on some off-road fun and I want to do something with my kids. So what did I do? I started looking online and I found Red Fox Power Sports and you know what? I started perusing their website and honestly I was pretty surprised with how cheap a lot of their stuff was. In fact, the one that I picked here was $1,650, but it was $350 to ship. So we'll say two grand to ship to my dad's house. I live in Alaska. They did not offer shipping to Alaska. So I went on FreightCenter.com and had it freighted up here for $1,400. So, so far I'm in this $3,500. Well, even going on Facebook Marketplace, going on Craigslist, looking at local shops, I couldn't find anything similar for under $5,000. So I still saved myself 1500 bucks. And guess what I did? I bought a trailer hitch and I did a bunch of other stuff that was far cheaper, but all inclusive in this for far less than I could find anything in Anchorage. So was it worth it? Well, let's dive into exactly what I got how to put it together, a quick overview, and then a road test. Eventually, we're gonna be doing some stuff off-road. We're gonna be doing some watch reviews off-road because we're gonna be testing out things like field watches and how to navigate back safely using the items like a field watch on your wrist. So let's just flip the camera around and we're gonna hop right into everything that's happened since I got it. Okay, so minus the cardboard, this is how it arrived in an angle iron steel box that I had to take out myself. Now this is 80% assembled. What does 80% assembled mean? Well, if you look at something like an engine, an engine has a lot of parts and I'll be honest with you, I actually had to put more together than I had originally thought. So once I started to pull things out um, of the angle iron box, you can see here that I've already taken some tires out. I'm going through and you know, things are set up relatively easily in this so that it's not very difficult to put together but you have to have some sort of general knowledge when it comes to mechanics, I feel, to put something like this together. Now, this did not come with any type of instructions at all. It came with a user manual, and you can get online and try to find some sort of manual for putting it together, but good luck on that. If you find it, leave a link down in the description below, but I was unable to find anything. So I'm doing this all by myself. It would have been easier if I had another person because this thing weighed in at 661 pounds for shipping weight. Of course, that includes the angle iron box there. Um, so what I did was I ended up putting on the rear suspension that was disconnected and then I ended up putting on the rear tires and then I had to drag this thing inside my garage because when I got this it was about an hour before I went to work. So this is the next day. I have the rear tires on and I'm just pushing it out into the driveway so that I can start putting it together. So, and this is what they mean by 80% assembled. Here's the front suspension and it is partially attached. Most of the stuff is together. You just have to do some of the finishing touches. Now, the front wheels are wider than the back tires. Not wider as in each tire, but overall the width is slightly larger than the back end. So, of course, they had to break it down so that the box would be square. This, I think, is so you have better turning radius and a little bit better handling. Now, this is me putting together the front suspension. Now, the issue that I had with this is the fact that they gave you a bag of nuts and bolts, but they didn't tell you what went to what. So this is where a level of knowledge when it comes to basic mechanics with vehicles comes in. Now, it wasn't hard to put together. You know, things just sort of common sense line up. Now, right here is where I basically hurt my back. You know what they say, lift with the legs not with the back. Well, I basically did the opposite and I paid the consequences.
Oh. Oh. Oh, my back. Oh, fuck. Oh. So after some Motrin and some time stretching my back, which still hurts to this day, and this was captured over a week ago, I continued to put together the front suspension because nothing is going to stop me from finishing this go-kart. Just basic things here, like this This right here is the adjustment system for the steering. And basically what it is, it's a giant hexagon bolt that turns one way to lengthen it, turns the other way to shorten it. So you really have to do some research on how to actually align your front tires. I'm, mine still aren't technically properly aligned. Now the seats went in relatively easy, ex except for the passenger seat. The front seat on the driver's side went together easily. The passenger seat, there was an issue. In fact, I had to drill out some of the holes because they just didn't line up good enough. Now this is sort of what you get for generally manufactured things that you have to put together in a kit. They assume Everything is the way it should be. Everything will line up. There's probably no actual testing to see it together. It's probably just, hey, we're gonna build these kits and this is how it is. You're gonna have to kind of figure out the rest. Well, I was eventually able to drill out the frame a little bit more and I got both of the seats attached properly and safely. And I'll be honest with you, even though they're cheaper style seats, they're extremely comfortable. And I've left this thing out in the rain and there's no issues on the pleather or whatever they use for the actual um, cover of the seat, there's no issue with it. I'm, I'm gonna have no issues spraying it off with water after mud gets on it. Now, I would say at this phase, after the seats are put on, basically everything is done except the roll cage. And the roll cage wasn't very hard to put on, I'll show you in just a second, but technically it could drive at this point, as long as you attach the gas tank, which you see just behind the two seats sort of up on the frame there. Now, next, like I said, is putting together the frame and the frame came in basically three giant pieces. You had the left side, you had the right side, and you had the back side. Now this did come with everything that you need. And I, in fact, I actually like the sort of bolt system that they use to attach the roll cage together. Sort of like the front adjustment arms for the steering. You have a bolt in the center that goes one way that tightens it down and then loosens it up the other way. So it's very convenient when putting this stuff together. You need absolutely no welding skills, which I found to be pretty great for the average everyday guy who has a small garage like myself. Now after everything was said and done, again, this is very easy. This was the fastest part of the entire build. It took an overall maybe 35 to 45 minutes to put together the entire roll cage to include the left, the right, and the back side. Now the back side has basically a swing gate in the back where you put a rear spare tire on it and it gives you access to a storage rack that really only allows you to put like a one gallon gas can and a small Tupperware container with some tools. I'm actually gonna be modifying this in the future to hold just a little bit more. Now here it is completely finished, sitting in the driveway. Now this is before I ever started it up. Now that is the big key, will it start? Now the question is, will it start? No, yes.
Okay, some pros and cons overall. This is a good buggy. I can't wait to use it off-road. Use premium octane. That's what it calls for. Also, it says it comes with shipping oil inside of the engine. Just change the oil. You'll never be wrong to put new oil in it. Now, when it comes to quality control, you can see they use sort of cheap steel here. And as I go to latch it down, it sort of breaks at this 90 degree. Super disappointed with that. That's even adjusting the latches. So basically, this rear hatch, this swing hatch that has a rear tire, has to be held down with these bungee cords. Now what that means is it causes an extreme rattle that you hear while, during the drive. This is the tiny little rack that it gives you, enough to fit one gallon of gasoline, but I think you could put more on top of the fuel tank here as long as you strap it down. Now I also added this grip tape to the bottom which makes a huge difference while driving it. I also added this for my phone so I could use something like GPS and mapping. So like I said before, we're going to be doing some off-road testing on this coming up in the next couple weeks. I will also be doing other watch reviews in conjunction with going out in the middle of nowhere because I've watched a lot of channels to include the time teller who goes off-roading and you know what I'll be honest with you, off-roading in California is nothing like off-roading in Alaska. It's it's like it's like not the same. So, we'll be going off-road and we'll be doing some reviews and some field watches in the true outdoors of Alaska and on in places like California. If you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see on this channel. I have so many videos coming up in the future. In fact, I have a Pagani Design Daytona sitting right here on my bench that I will be reviewing tomorrow and releasing the next day. So hit that notification bell so you guys can be notified when I drop my next video. Until next time.